Hello, Eclectic Crafter here. I had created this cookie recipe. Let's see. And I've already made chocolate chip and you make the vanilla ones first and then the chocolate and I don't have to clean everything up. And I lucked out. <laughs> I'm in the store and they are discontinuing the white chocolate bars, the baker bars. And I got a whole stack of them, 39 cents each. So, I'm going to go ahead and cut this and get it ready. We're going to try this again. Now my dishwasher's running and hopefully you can't hear it. It is supposed to be whisper quiet and it's a lot quieter than the old one. So we'll pray. But I got chased everybody out. Now maybe I can concentrate on what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got one cup of softened butter in here. And this recipe, like I said, I created it, so it's a little unique. We've got three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, two thirds of a cup of packed brown sugar, one teaspoon of pure vanilla. I never actually measure it, I eyeball it, so a little more, a little less. Uh, three quarters of a cup of cocoa, which I only have one three quarters of a cup measuring cup, so it's pre-measured and dumped in the flour cup. Two eggs, one teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of cornstarch, which I think this time I'm going to try one eighth of a teaspoon, so it'll give a little bit more spread. We'll see. The cornstarch is to help absorb some of the butter. Too much and basically you have little cake cookies. Um, too little and they spread all over. This is just something I've started doing in the last few months and my cookies hold together better and they actually look like bakery cookies so I'm guessing that's what they do. Uh, one teaspoon of baking soda, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now the optional bits to put in it, of course, is anything you want when you get down to it. But I'm putting one and a half cups of, cho of white chocolate. Uh, it's a bar chopped up, plus I had some white chocolate chips left. Nice little combo there. I'm not the greatest at chopping them up, so most of that is like either big chunks or dust. I also have Reese's Pieces that I was going to put in here instead of the white chocolate, but my son requested white chocolate. I usually will do a cup of white chocolate and a half a cup of mac chopped macadamia nuts, but he asked me not to use macadamia nuts this time. He just wasn't in the mood for it. And I have also done, when I created this, I made it with... Uh, M&M's, mini and regular size mixed in. Really good. I mean, basically it's a brownie in a cookie form. So, it the recipe turns out, so I'm enjoying it. I can only eat one myself. I decided to go back to my kitchen aid for this because I'm making multiple batches of cookies and it's easier to scoop out and clean in this. The anchor strum, I love it. It's a good hard beaten mixer, in, but it takes me longer because I have to constantly stop and scrape, whereas this I've got a scraping paddle right on it. And it has the hole in the middle of the plastic one, so cleaning it out, unless I put a glove on and get in there and rake it with my hand, takes me forever. And I just didn't feel like dealing with that today, so I got Mimi out. Let me get this off. Okay. But, it's a pain 
putting stuff in. If we could get a KitchenAid that mixed like this, but you were able to get to the bowl, like they made an oblong bowl, it would be perfect. Because the little plastic pouring shields, I'm always knocking them off and then they bust up and I would rather just have the openness on the side. Give me a gap on the side. I put my salt right in there. If you're using salted butter, then I would suggest using half the salt. I'm using one teaspoon of salt because I've got unsalted butter. But it's sea salt that I ground up in the food processor because it was coarse. So it doesn't blend very well. If it's table salt, go ahead and put it in your flour if you prefer. Let me get this mixed up well. And that's done. Eggs that I did not break. Oh, I tried to have everything done, but they kept coming and talking to me. Men, they're so distracting. <laughs> it was, my eggs are sweating. If you keep a plate off to the side, you can set all your utensils on there. I no longer feel compelled to try to do it with one hand. <laughs> My hands aren't worth the darn anyways. Watkins, they've been around forever. I get it at Walmart. I like the Madagascar, but wow, the price really jumped. And I'm on a very limited budget. My husband's retired, and I, uh, and medically retired now when I had to quit working it kind of changed things in our lives but that's okay that's weird I've never seen it do that before all right now I'm gonna put the cocoa in here I know most people don't Cocoa is dry and it, it needs its oil. If you put it right into the butter at the beginning, it's actually best. But I was yakking to you and went ahead with the rest of the stuff. But this will still work. I want it all moistened up before I add flour and such. Well, thank you. That is a KitchenAid for you. Oh. <laughs> I just lost about a quarter of a teaspoon. It looks like more, but it's not. It's just spread out. Don't think it's going to affect the flavor that much. God, this machine needs Oh, eighth of a teaspoon of that. We're fine. Where's my oatmeal? This is what I used to do when I made cakes. This is the mixer that made all those wedding cakes too. I'd put my sugar powdered sugar in, cover it up. Anything that gets fluffed is caught by the towel instead of all over everything. Okay, we want to beat it till it's nice and smooth looking. So, 
I have no idea when it stopped. But I would have just been fast forwarding through all that anyways. It's got all its makings in it. This is the cookie dough. Seems a bit dry, but this is the same way I developed it and it turned out really well. And I'm going to chill it. I'm going to use a one and a quarter ounce cookie scoop and make mounds and I will cook them in chilled mounds. And that actually makes a difference. If, you, if the dough isn't chilled, they spread more. Just because the butter is already halfway there to spreading. It will cook for a pan of cookies at 350 degrees. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And even after my oven beeps, I try to wait another couple of minutes because that means it just got to temperature. And I want it to be an even temperature throughout, so I let it go a few minutes more. And then 10 minutes at 350. And you know what a brownie looks like. So as soon as it starts, if it's starting to look a little dry at the edges, take them out. I leave them on the pan for another... Ugh. Oh, goodness, look at that. And that's what a KitchenAid does. Ugh, what a mess. Anyway, I leave them on the pan for a few more minutes so that they can, they will finish cooking on the pan. The pan is still hot. They're still hot. It's like when you use a microwave. The microwave tells you to cook it on high for two minutes and let it sit for five because it's still cooking. If you want to get it completely done and while cooking in the microwave, when it gets done cooking itself, five minutes later it's overcooked. That's why. You need to follow those directions and stop when it tells you to stop. My husband always overcooks everything. He, he'll he reheat it on high for like five minutes. I said, honey, no. You reheat it for just a minute. Let it sit. <laughs> stir it up. But he don't care, so all right. We'll let him do it. Wow, this poor old thing. So scratched up. I will bring you back with pictures of the cooked cookies.